what is up you guys and welcome back to my channel so today is going to be a fun video because i'm on my way to ladies retreat in colorado i've been to a ladies retreat before um in colorado but it's been a, a couple of years and it's the first ladies retreat that i've been to after moving to colorado so i'm excited i'm with my mother-in-law say hi hello <laughs> We're traveling together. There's like four other vehicles involved in this little carpool. Um, but I'm excited about retreat. We just stopped at Walmart, which this Walmart here is so pretty. I wanted to show you guys what it looks like. It kind of looks like unique. I've, I've only seen one other Walmart that looks like this one. Yes. Anyway, I thought it looked kind of cool. It doesn't look like the average Walmart, so I thought you guys would think that was cool. But anyway, now we're going to Sonic to get some food in our bellies, and then we are off to retreat. Actually, I think we're gonna take Sonic to a park, and then we're gonna eat it there. But yeah, I thought I'd take you guys along with this weekend and see what I can film. I'm not sure how long this video will be, but I hope you guys enjoy it. A lot of the restaurants here look so different. Like, look at this Sonic. How cute. It almost looks like a, a cabin. Love it. Okay, we're eating at the park now. Everybody's gonna watch me. <laughs> That's great. Anyway, on a scale from one to ten, how hard is it to leave your kids? I think it was easier for me. <laughs> I struggled a little bit, but I was ready. I was like. Joy starts crying. Oh. And so I was like, oh, please don't do that. Mm -mm. That would make it hard. Yeah. Jacob started crying too, but he cries all the time, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't know this, but that is the backside of Pike's Peak. How cool. Okay, we are here. Okay, we are here. I haven't showed you guys our cabin yet, and I will in a little bit, but right now they're setting up in the church. But I wanted to come out here because I thought this view was so pretty. So pretty, and then they also have this little pond right here. How cute is this? And then that is our cabin over there, and it's pretty big. Like, it's got like 50 bunks in there. Our ladies' retreat couldn't be without all of you because our region is very small. Our theme for ladies' retreat this year is a woman of prayer. And the key verse that I took that from is Matthew 25, 29. Uh, and verse 13 is the, the main part, but I do want to read a few verses ahead of that. For I know, we're going to start in verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. You're my friend and you are my brother even though you are my king. I love you more than any other so much more than anything. 
God with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four, four praetorians of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, he said the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands, and the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came, they, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel, and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod, and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Just so we understand the times that the Church of God was facing, about 15 years have passed by since Jesus ascended. And it was a time of unrest for the Church. As we know, um, Saul, before he became Paul, he persecuted the church, but by this time, the church had seen a miraculous conversion from the man, the main persecutor of the church. And although some amazing things were happening, like thousands coming to Christ, and like I just mentioned, the conversion of Paul, of Paul Saul, there was still many trying to stop the church of God. Herod Agrippa, the king over Judea, uh, in an effort to please the religious Jews of that time, he unleashed the fire of persecution. He was another enemy of the church. They had to continue the fellowship. In these times that we are living in, times of constant unrest in the outside world, our homes will have to become safe havens. Our houses of prayer. And we have seen this already with the pandemic. Inside our homes, we will need to have it together if we do plan to survive. Walk into breakfast. I'm better. <gasps> we have like 14 million shares. <laughs> 14 million. It's a lot of things. <laughs> Say good morning. Good morning. It's your class to say good morning. I can't see you, wait. There, <laughs> now say good morning. Good morning. <laughs> um, say good morning. Huh? Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> and then you 
will go to the far. Okay. Oh my word. Sometimes we think if we can pray hard enough. A veces pensamos que si podemos orar uh, lo suficiente, or loud enough, o lo suficiente alto, or shed enough tears, o uh, derramar suficientes lágrimas, or something like that, that surely will win God's favor. Mm -hmm. Algo uh, tal como esto ganaría el favor de Dios. And he will answer those prayers. Y él contestaría las oraciones. And we need to be fervent. Y tenemos que ser fervientes. That's biblical. Eso es bíblico. But we need to be very careful how we approach God. Pero tenemos que tener bastante cuidado de cómo nos presentamos al Señor. Because there are no magic words. Porque no hay palabras mágicas. That are going to secure God's answer. Que van a asegurarnos la respuesta de parte de Dios. If I was able, I've thought of this sometimes when I've, I've tried so hard to pray about a situation I'm so desperate about. Han habido circunstancias donde he orado desesperadamente. And I thought, you know, if it was possible for me to pray and say just the right words that would make God answer. Y me ha dicho, uh, si tan solo fuera a posible de orar de una manera donde yo pudiera decir las palabras correctas. Then the power would really be mine. Entonces el poder right. sería mm -hmm. mío. Mm -hmm. Rather than God. En vez de poder de Dios. That's not how it works. Y no es como esto
Did you hear that? Necessary. Necessary. Exactly. And, and very important, y muy importante, for the spiritual welfare by spiritual of each child of God. De cada hijo de Dios. Therefore, Así que, everyone is urged, <coughs> urge, we are urged urge, to faithfully maintain as far as possible family worship at home at least once a day. If we are honest with ourselves, we can acknowledge that one of the biggest enemies our prayer life has right now are these things. Social media. I'm going to say that again. If we are honest with ourselves, this is Sister Brenda speaking to herself. We can acknowledge that one of the biggest enemies our prayer life has right now is social media. And if you're not involved in any of it, praise the Lord. But we live in a day and age that ha has become social media dependent. I can say this because I've had to realize this in my own personal life. The devil has always had distractions. This is just the more modern one. Since he is, since he's been, he's always had distractions. I'm just going to do this. No, Stephanie, you're going to hurt yourself and you're never going to get back up. Yeah, don't fall. Stephanie, do not trip. Oh my goodness. How pretty. So pretty. Gorgeous. Okay, so church just got over and we've been cleaning up and stuff and so it's the last day and we are heading home today but I wanted to show you guys I'm so out of breath it's so cold outside right now my hands are freezing um, I want to show you guys what our little cabin looked like that we stayed in so this was our room all the rooms basically look the same with more or less cabins I slept on this bed it was a little bit bigger and I was like man I could have brought Jacob with me or no I couldn't have he was too old but yeah I slept on this bed let me take you out here so I can show you what? smaller rooms down here there's a shower house room another bathroom down there 
a toilet room. More bunks down here. More bunks in there. More bunks in here. I've actually not been back here. Oh, more bunks down here. <laughs> And more down there. <laughs> and here is my wreath that I made. And it ended up turning out pretty good. Like, I'm pretty happy with it. At first, I was, like, scared to use a stencil and paint and stuff. Because, it, you know, I, I'm not crafty. And I was scared that it wasn't going to turn out good. But that's what it looks like. 